So welcome, Dr. Thompson. Is my mic on? Can you hear me? Oh, I get to walk around. I get to be like a young Oprah. So <laughs> we're going to move around. How's everybody doing this morning? Yes? Thank you so much for being here um, and joining us this morning. Um, as Dr. Heath said, I'm Dr. Haley Thompson. I'm an associate center director like her at Carmano's Cancer Institute, and I oversee community outreach and engagement. So we cover, my team and I cover uh, communities and work with communities all across the state, not just here in Detroit, but also uh, going all the way up to Petoskey. So folks in uh, Flint, we see you. Uh, Craig is one of our community stakeholders. We see you. Megan, I see you over there in Flint. Um, and let me just uh, ask for uh, those community stakeholders, those community members who have worked with our office, can you just wave or stand so we can just acknowledge you? Yeah, <laughs> stand up, yeah. Thank you, thank you for being here. We do a lot of work with communities on the ground to understand communities' priorities when it comes to cancer research and cancer care. We take it really, really seriously. So um, we have a, a table outside um, the, uh, in the hallway. Please sign up so you can learn more about what our office is doing and some of the opportunities there. So I actually coming to you this morning um, in a very interesting space because yesterday morning I actually sat with one of my closest friends while a doctor confirmed her cancer diagnosis, right? Um, the first time she was really hearing that. It was sobering to say the least, life shifting. It was like an experience like no other. Cancer is horrible. And the work that we do here, whether we're doing it as volunteers or in the hospital, wherever, is rough. Because of that, I try to find joy where I can, right? Right? Yes? <laughs> so I'm gonna have a little bit of fun here with you this morning um, as I talk to you about clinical trials. So. How many of you uh, are fans of Star Trek? Star Trek, yeah, okay. <laughs> Trekkies out there, okay, good, good, good. So um, there are, you know, you, as you probably know, there are a lot of new shows that are like a spinoff of Star Trek, right, that come out. There's one that I love now. It's called Star Trek Strange New World, and it's like a prequel. It's like what happened, what was a young Spock like, right, on the Enterprise? What was a young Uhura like on the Enterprise? I love this show. Um, it's really cool. And um, I'm always fascinated by, like, what's happening in the sick bay. Right? So many of you know from Star Trek, there's Dr. McCoy. He's not on the ship yet. They have a Dr. Mbenga, and he's from Kenya, and he talks like this all the time. He used to be a soldier, but now he wants to heal people. It's amazing. And they have church, um, her name is uh, Nurse Chapel. Nurse Chapel. She is as brilliant she, uh, or and competent as any physician. And it's amazing what they do on Star Trek and on these shows, right? They can take like this wand and scan your body and they know exactly what's happening with you. And then Nurse Chapel will go off in the corner and put some things together and give you a shot and then you're cured in like a few hours, right? It's incredible, right? And we see things like that and we say, that's science fiction, that's fantasy, that can't really happen, right? Well, let's think about that for a while, right? We had Dr. Robinette give this awesome presentation on imaging. Let's go back to like, let's say the 1920s, right? What are people doing in the 1920s? Like listening to jazz, dancing to Charleston, I don't know. But do you think back then, they would have thought that there could be a device like a mammogram, where you could do, take some compression, look at the breast, and, try, and actually find cancer and detect cancer and save women's lives? Do you think they thought that was ever possible? It probably seemed. If you had told somebody that back then, it was science fiction or fantasy. And I'll even take it a step further, right? Today, at Carmanos, we have technology emerging in imaging, right? And that we're still evaluating called SoftView. Anyone who heard of SoftView? No. Yeah, SoftView. This is a technology, an imaging technology, where instead of, again, having these, you know, taking a mammogram where you would put your breast between the plates, so you get that compression, that discomfort, which is important, it detects cancer, but, you know, a lot of people try to avoid it. That's why we're always trying to encourage women to go get that mammogram. SoftView you, you <laughs> uses ultrasound technology. You lie down, so that's already a win, right? Instead of standing up, I get to lie down. But <laughs> you lie down, and you dip your breast into a, a warm pool of water, and it uses ultrasound technology to find cancers in your breast, right? And it's especially good if you have dense breasts, right? And there's a company out there, um, or a table out there, that talks about breast density and how it increases risk for breast cancer, right? But that's the technology. That's the advances we have. Who would have thought that we would have that kind of technology to discover breast cancer? So I think you know where I'm going with this. How do we get there, right? <laughs> Through research, right? Anybody know the definition of research? Some of my team members or my community members, we've taught this, right? 
the definition of research is literally the generation or production of new knowledge. It is literally our efforts to discover something new, new technologies, new methods, new devices that can help people, right? So, um, and uh, research is also really important in this area. It's a type, um, or uh, within research, we have clinical trials. Clinical trials are actually the methods we use to test new methods, test new strategies, test new devices in this war against cancer. So um, what I'm gonna, and I'm, I'm gonna also share with you why it's so important to talk about clinical trials. I know this is probably something you've heard about before, but we really need to reinforce this message now more than ever. You know, certainly there have always been some groups that are underrepresented in research, particularly like African Americans, and for good reasons, right? Because of the medical abuses and the discrimination we face in healthcare systems and research institutions. But over the past few years, we have seen an increase in people's mistrust, and across the board, no matter, across groups, of science, mistrust of research, mistrust of medicine. It's growing, and that's a problem, right? Because if we continue to let that grow and seep into all these different areas, we're not gonna advance when it comes to medicine. We're gonna not advance as we need to when it comes to cancer, right? So I'm sharing this with you because we need everybody in this room and everybody listening in other parts of the state to be really ambassadors and really help share the message that research and clinical trials really do help to save lives. So at this point, I know that many of you um, got a, an email or a message about Project Facts, and hopefully um, you engaged with that, um, and you said you were gonna see a video today, so now we're gonna watch the video. Welcome to Project Facts, facts about cancer clinical trials. The information presented in this video is adapted from materials provided by the National Cancer Institute by researchers at Carmanis Cancer Institute and Wayne State University School of Medicine. In this video, you will learn about the importance of clinical trials and how they contribute to society. Clinical trials are research studies that test new ways to prevent, find, and treat disease. They bring about discoveries that improve public health, as well as ensure that newly developed medicines and procedures are safe and effective. Every clinical trial follows an approved plan and has specific guidelines or eligibility criteria on who can participate. There are four main types of clinical trials. Prevention trials look at your risk for disease and ways to reduce it. Screening trials test new ways to find disease early when it may be more easily treated. Treatment trials test new treatments or new ways of using existing treatments. And quality of life trials which tests ways to improve comfort and well-being of those with illness or disease and those who have a history of the illness and disease. Clinical trials help providers understand how therapies work and whether they are safest and most effective. They can lead to new and better treatment standards. They increase knowledge about disease and related health behavior, and they help to provide the best available medicine. Why is it important for clinical trials to include people from all backgrounds? Clinical trials need to include people from all backgrounds because all populations experience illness. Characteristics such as age, gender, race, and ethnic origin can affect medication and treatment. If we don't have diverse representation in clinical trials, providers won't know whether new treatments are safe or effective for everyone. I think it helps just to have the knowledge and of different people, not just one person, and to see that, you know, everybody is different. Mm -hmm. And it may work for some people, it may not, but I think it's a hope for something to work, mm -hmm. for clinical trials to work. There are several safeguards in place to protect the health and safety of clinical trial participants. All clinical trials have a moral obligation to protect participants and must treat participants humanely and ethically. Furthermore, research studies must take steps to ensure that your health information remains confidential. Finally, informed consent from participants are required for a study to begin. What are some of the possible benefits of participating in a clinical trial? Benefits to participating in a clinical trial could include opportunities for participants to learn and adopt healthy behaviors during the trial period, determining the optimal dose of therapy, early access to new cancer treatments and new health technology, and early detection of cancer recurrence, which could potentially result in improved outcomes. Finally, 
patients are monitored more closely and often have greater access to their clinical care team. I think the benefit of being part of a research study is that uh, you can help mankind, you can help be the leader in medical technologies and advances in behavior modifications to uh, find out ways that we can prevent, cure, um, detect different diseases as well as improve the quality of life and the only way that we can achieve, achieve that is through clinical studies so that we can measure what how these things affect our disease over time. What are some possible risks in participating in a clinical trial? Risks to participating in a clinical trial could include participants may not directly benefit from participating in a clinical trial. Multiple clinic and laboratory visits may be required, which may be inconvenient. Participants may experience discomfort or unknown side effects. Also, participants may not get the final results of the trial until it is published in a medical journal. However, they will be able to get their own tumor results at the time of reassessment. Some people are suspicious of research and clinical trials. Previous events in American medical history, such as the Tuskegee syphilis study and the harvesting of cells from Henrietta Lacks, have led to mistrust of medical research. Since these events, protections have been put in place to prevent unethical treatment in medical research. All research studies and clinical trials undergo careful review by selected experts and non-medical community members to make sure that they have the potential to do more good than harm. They are also reviewed to make sure that the purpose of the research will be clear to those being asked to participate through informed consent. Informed consent is a process in which a person, after learning about all aspects of the trial, decides to and confirms willingness to participate. This informed consent document will summarize the study purpose, length, tests, and how participant data will be used and stored. Explain one's rights as a research participant. Provide information on risks, benefits, and alternative therapies. Outline what to expect as a study participant and provide a reminder that participation is voluntary and that participants can choose to withdraw at any time. Furthermore, every person has the right to receive study-related documents in their preferred language, decide and agree to the requirements of the study, and have an adequate knowledge and understanding before participation begins. The entire team was there initially to take all our data. Um, they took blood samples, um, they took body scans, um, BMI uh, um, percentages. Um, they helped us fill the forms out. And the whole, that whole process was less than an hour. And yeah, they made it very, it was very simple. You know, I was aware that I was able to withdraw from the, uh, this, this study at any time that I wished, which made it less in intimidating, really. Yeah. Myths about clinical trials. Myth. Study participants are given a placebo or sugar pill. The reality, a placebo is never used in a place of standard treatment. Quality of care is not sacrificed. Although patients are not guaranteed to get the new treatment, they will at least get the standard of care. Myth, study participation is for people without options. Reality, there are different clinical trials available for all types of patients those who have not yet been treated, those for whom standard treatments haven't worked, and those looking for alternative treatment options. Myth, once people begin participation, they must stay in the study. Reality, participation is voluntary. Participants can leave a study at any time. Clinical trials costs are split into two categories, patient care costs and research costs. Patient care costs are related to treating a patient's cancer and are covered by health insurance. Examples of patient care costs include doctor's visits, hospital stays, standard cancer treatments, lab tests, imaging tests such as x-rays. Research costs are the costs associated with participating in a trial and are typically covered by the trial sponsor or the research institution. Examples of research costs 
include study drugs, lab tests for research purposes, and additional x-ray or imaging tests. How do people find out about clinical trials? Talk to your doctor, nurse, or other healthcare provider to learn more about prevention and treatment options, including clinical trials. You may also want to discuss any concerns you may have about participating in a clinical trial. Healthcare providers want to hear your concerns, including any fears or suspicions. Talk to your doctor, nurse, or other healthcare provider to learn more about prevention and treatment options, including clinical trials. You may also want to discuss personal and practical obstacles to study participation and or share concerns, including fear or suspicion. For information on clinical trials at Kermanis Cancer Institute, visit the Kermanis Clinical Trials website at www.kermanis.org forward slash Kermanis forward slash clinical trials at Kermanis Cancer Institute. You can also call 313-576-9790. To find additional information on cancer clinical trials, visit clinicaltrials.gov or the American Cancer Society at cancer.org. Okay. So thank you very much for your attention to our video. We hope that you've learned something. And what I'm really excited to share with you is that um, our team in our Office of Cancer Health Equity is launching over the next couple of months a new initiative. We're calling it Carmanos Academy. And we are going to be able to teach regular people, lay people, to share cancer information with others in their community, whether it be with your sorority or your civic organization or your church. We're gonna give you training, even with this particular video. We're, this is our 1.0, we're, uh, we're cleaning it up, we're adding some information to it. We're gonna come out with our 2.0 really soon, and we're gonna be able then to teach people in the community how to present this video to others so they can learn more about clinical trials. I'm gonna do it for cancer prevention. We're gonna uh, touch on genetics. We just heard a little bit about that this morning and precision medicine. Did you know that treatment is becoming more precise to the individual based on your genome and your environmental exposures and your specific history? All of this we wanna be able to teach in a community to our communities, but we wanna train the trainer, so to speak. We wanna teach regular people how to share it with others in their lives. So please sign up for our office so you can get more updates around this. And thank you for your attention. If you did the pretest before for Project Facts, you can do this QR code or talk Madison. Can you wave your hand, Madison and Von Seal? You know, go to them. They'll help you get access to the post test so that we can finish up that piece. And that's my time. And uh, I will let uh, Dr. Heath introduce the next speaker. A round of applause for Dr. Thompson. Fantastic. Incredible. And we're so lucky to work all together at a cancer institute because you could see there's a lot of moving parts in being able to deliver the best type of cancer care. It's really my pleasure to introduce Mr. Keith Hilton. Um, Keith and I have known each other for 12 years. Uh, He's actually my patient who has undergone several clinical trials. And sometimes I think it's really important to hear right from the person who has undergone through and share his experience about, you know, how did it go and how does he feel about it? And he's now standing here in front of you 12 years later to really talk about it. So he's gonna say a few words about his experience. Thank you so much. Warm welcome. First of all, I would say I had no adverse effects of being involved in a clinical trial. My trial was testing a new medication, and so I got the gold standard of care plus an additional medication to test its effectiveness against others, against the gold standard by itself. My name is Keith Hilton, and I am a 19-year cancer survivor. My journey with prostate cancer began in December of 2004. My cancer was detected during a normal annual physical exam used in digital rectal exam, and it was verified later by further testing. Like most men, I had no idea what a prostate was, exactly what it did or where it was at. I had a general idea and that's it. Most men can't even pronounce it properly. <laughs> so after the initial shock of diagnosis, 
My first reaction was to get on the web and find out all I could about prostate cancer, its treatment, and who in the local area was the best at treating it. I made the decision after talking with people in the US2 groups that I was going to have my cancer taken out, my prostate taken out. I learned that you wanted somebody that had 200 to 400 surgeries under their belt, and they really knew what they were doing. My surgeon was a local sur surgeon, and he was one of the best in the world. He was one of the three that helped develop the robotic procedures. He did a great job, and I had great results. I didn't like the follow-up at that particular institution, though. So 20 months later, when my cancer started to become active again, I talked with the people at the US2 group I was meeting with, and the people, the men there who were most happy with their doctors and their hospitals were people who were being treated at Carmelos. Even though I had to change my insurance because of the way it was set up, I was uh, limited in where I could go on my original insurance, so I waited till I could change it in the fall of uh, 2011. And I changed my insurance so that I could go to Carmanos, and at the same time, I had learned about and I signed up for a clinical trial. The information given clearly explained what was going to be done and what, that I could withdraw at any time. And I knew that the information received from this trial might not directly benefit me, but it could benefit other people in the future. On the other hand, because I was testing a new medicine, if that medicine was the latest and greatest thing, I was getting it before anybody else. So I had all kinds of benefits. There are many benefits to being in a clinical trial. You get the best medicines. You use the gold standard of what's available now, plus an additional medicine. You have the, the treatments, and the doctors are up to par on the latest knowledge and treatments for cancer. You get the A-team. My treatment for cancer has required several different changes in different types of care, including many different types of imaging, which Carmanos, a hospital dedicated for cancer, was able to provide. Cancer research saves lives. I'm open to questions if anyone has some. I think it's, it takes a lot of courage for him to stand up on this stage. So another round of applause for you, Keith.